Fox 8 News Special Report. Hi, I'm Jim Gallagher with the Fox 8 Sports Special Report. We are now going live to New Orleans Saints camp, and Tom Benson, who is about to make Thanks an announcement with Mike here, Ditka as that, the next head coach of the Saints. We're gonna, you're going to hear today an exciting thing for the New Orleans Saints, for the media and all the fans, uh, the great fans of New Orleans Saints. Bill Kaharick is our new Chief Operating Officer, President, and General Manager. Just like Jim Finks was during the period of time that he was here. This is a new beginning for Bill and for our club. Bill has complete authority. The head coach will report to him. We had many good candidates for this position, but it did not take long for me to decide that Bill was the man for the job. Once I made up my mind, we began to negotiate the terms of his appointment. But we began weeks ago to work together to find the right person for the head coaching job position. Bill has been working on his own list of coaching and, and the criteria that he saw that we needed for the New Orleans Saints head coach. I want to thank Bill for handling this search for a head coach while the terms of his own situation was still being determined. He was operating in good faith. With regard to his own situation, and I, Bill, I really appreciate that confidence. My job now is to support him and our coach in their efforts to put a winning team on the field. Bill's appointment as head of our club is a, research, is a result of a research, is a result of a search for the best man, for the best job in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the New Orleans Saints. Bill's credentials have been measured against all available candidates. More than ever, I'm convinced that he is the man for this job and deserves the opportunity to operate our club with total authority. It is very important that the person getting this authority, this position, is someone I'm comfortable with, someone that I can communicate with and that can communicate with me. I have a good relationship with him and I know it'll continue that way. If you look at Bill's resume, it's impressive. He's worked every job on the football side of the business. His credentials clearly stand out. He is credibility and respect. Other owners and other NFL executives know his ability and respect him. Bill understands the mission here. He knows what needs to be done and has a plan. Bill knows talent, our talent and the talent around the league. He also knows the structure and organization of the teams we're competing against. He has a vested interest in what happens here. He's put a lot of himself into this franchise and he's very dedicated. Bill has a heritage in football. He was raised in the football family. He understands building a team, coaching a team, playing a game, and successfully in a successful business operations. And he knows how all these aspects blend together to make a successful club. Finally, I have a word for the media and the fans. I felt from the beginning, as I stated, that we would have a better result if we c conducted this process away from the public view. 
I know that we have not been very forthcoming with information as it went along. I felt, though, that it was a lot better that we didn't discuss this thing openly if we were going to have the best results. And I think that we have obtained the best results. We didn't want to tip our hand to our competitors. You know, everybody shooting off the wall. Everybody thought New Orleans Saints was laying behind the log. You know, all the time we were doing all the best things and getting the best people to give us the best results. And that's for a winning football team. I appreciate everybody's patience during this time. And I can realize that sometime um, we all get a little impatient. With that, I'd like to introduce our new president, General Manager, Bill Kaharick. Bill? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. I spoke to uh, Carl Peterson a little while ago and wanted to know if this thing all got ironed out. And I said, yeah. And I said, you know what? I got as many titles as you do now, Carl. You taught me well. There's, there's many different ways to be successful in the NFL. And my blueprint for success centers on placing the right people in the right position and giving them the tools and the opportunity to win. And first and foremost is the players, coaches, administrators, and staff. I was able to get uh, Tom's full support in this. And we, and I want to emphasize we, this organization together, all the people in the organization, we're going to make it work. We're all going to operate on the same page, and there's only going to be one page. Obviously, uh, the first order of business to get everybody on the same page and get everybody in the organization going in the right direction was to hire the right person as head coach. And that was the first order of business of our club. As Tom had mentioned, uh, through this process, and I had said publicly uh, at the Senior Bowl that I was working my list, talking to people, talking about people. And uh, many of you in this room know my past background and know uh, that uh, I have a uh, close to the best intrigue operation. Um, but, but I had criteria set up in the search for a head coach. I had 15 criteria, and uh, I measured everyone against each specific criteria. And the important things that evolved with Mike Ditka is, one, he was a proven head coach in the league. His, his football knowledge is, is it's not, you can't even put anybody else in the same class with his football knowledge as a player, assistant coach coach. He certainly knows how to develop talent and get the most out of the players. He's, he's a leader. He was a leader as a player, and he's been a leader as a head coach. He commands respect. He commands respect not only from his coaching staff, his players, but people in the organization. And he's a motivator. He knows how to tweak people, whether it's players, coaches, people in the organization, to get everybody enthusiastic and going in the right direction. Th those were just some of the criteria. There's one to me that made the most significant and made my decision very easy. He's a winner. And that's the bottom line. That's what we're in this business for, is to win. Everything else is secondary. Now, before I, I bring Mike out, I talked to Dan Simmons, our equipment manager today. And I said, Dan, I'm going to requisition some orders for some sunglasses and a headband, <laughs> because I'm sure some of our players are going to need them when they come here. Without that, I'd like to introduce the new head football coach of the New Orleans Saints, Mike Ditka.
thought this would be real easy, but it's not. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Benson, first of all, for the opportunity. Uh, life to me is about challenges and climbing mountains, and uh, that's what I intend to do, try to climb another mountain. I'm looking forward to working with Bill. I respect Bill and I admire him. I know he'll do a great job, and I will do a great job. I look forward to working with Chet Franklin, the rest of the people in the management of this organization. I, uh, I received a call today from a good friend and, 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 in my opinion, a great man, and that was Jim Moore. And uh, I really appreciate what he had to say. And uh, I appreciate what his contributions to the National Football League have been. And I hope to have the type of success that he had in this town. There's a misconception maybe to some people about who I am, but there's never been a misconception in my mind about who I am, and I know who I am. And Not that that's good or bad, but that's me, and I can't change that very much. I just want to tell you the one thing I want to say, that our goal, the Saints organization, will be the best we can be to maximize our total potential in every area, by every player, by every person in this organization, by every coach, by every person in management that we will do the best we can to put the best product on the field that we can that the people in this community and the people around the National Football League will be proud of. That's my goal. I want to create a sense of pride, a greater sense of pride in what this organization is all about. And some people say, why? And I say, why not? Why not us? Why can't we be the guys who do it? And that's up to us as coaches and players to make that happen. It's not going to come easy, but nothing good in life ever does come easy. It's going to be fun doing that. I want to make it fun for everybody. I want to make it fun, especially for the people who work for this organization. I want them to enjoy and reap the, the spoils of victory, I guess is what I have to say. And I want the fans to enjoy it tremendously. I want to do the right things that the fans will enjoy it. And I want you people in the media to understand and hopefully you understand that we are trying to do the right things, put the right people in the right positions to win the most football games we can win. And our goal is to win. It's not to win later, it's to win now. But I don't believe in living in the past. I think the past is for cowards. You live in the past, you die in the past. The past has nothing to do with what this organization is doing from this day forward. So the record's been written. We're going to try to, we can't erase. We're not going to worry about it. We're just going to try to do the very best we can right now and to prepare for the future. I'm going to leave you with one quote. I'm a big guy about quotes because I believe in them. Pretty good coach one time, Vince Lombardi, made this statement. He said, the difference between success and failure in people is not a lack of strength and not a lack of knowledge, but basically it's a lack of will. There will be no lack of will in this organization. And anybody who has a lack of will will not be here. It's that simple. People say, can you do things the way you did them before? I don't know. But I'm sure as hell going to try. I'm going to try from the bottom of my heart because it's the only way I know how to do them. And what your mind can conceive, your heart would believe, you can achieve. I know that's corny, but hey, what else is there in life? If you're not idealistic, what the hell else is there? And I'm an idealistic guy. I believe you can do the things if you work hard enough at them. I hope to assemble the best staff I can a staff that can work together for the common good of this organization, and we hope to, as to assemble the best football players we can. There's going to be changes made. I think anybody who doesn't understand that would be a fool. We're going to make some changes, but the people who stay, I think we're going to enjoy it. Those who don't, I can't really say. Uh, I'll be uh, glad to answer any questions you, you have. Well, I, I, most of it is done. It would be foolish to name it all right now because I don't have everybody hired. I really don't. Well, I, I have hired a few people that work with me in Chicago. Yes, I've hired Danny Bramwitz. I think that's well known. And I hired a guy who was a defensive uh, secondary coach for me in Chicago, by Zavin Jarellian. But that'll all be that'll all be documented in the next couple of days, gang. I mean, really. Danny will be my offensive coordinator, and Zavin will be my defensive coordinator. Rick Ventori will stay on staff. He'll be the assistant to the head coach and handle the linebackers. Bobby April will also be stay on staff and he will handle the special teams because I don't believe that there is a better special teams coach in the country than Bobby. So. Mike, what specifically brought you back to the game? 
Well, I, I tell you, if, if you say it's, uh, I think it's a challenge, but I think this man brought me back right here when I talked to him, these two men. When I talked to them and, and I felt that they felt that I could make a difference, that I could help put this thing back on the track, and that's all we're going to try to do. Uh, it's, you know, I don't believe in miracles, but I don't think it's going to take a miracle. I just think it takes hard work, effort, discipline. I think we have to bring out the best in the people. I think we have to ask people to, to perform in a, in a manner that, that shows you that we're a team of high character. I, you know, I, I know the game has changed, and I know it's part of entertainment to do some of the things, and I think that's all good. It's, it's for the fun of the game. But to me, football is a very serious business. Well, there are two guys that we, we would love to have with us, and when we plan on talking to them, I really have not talked to them yet. I know that I'm bringing them into town to talk to them, and when we want them to be a part of uh, what we're doing. Well, Mike, 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 how much Shaw. influence will you have? Willie Shaw also, yes. How much influence will you have in who's drafted, who's free agents these days? And how much of that input will you have? Well, you know, I, I think, and I, I want to say something. I, I don't know really how to say this after being out of it for a couple of years. Now, I hear everybody talk about total control. And I become totally amazed about what total control is. Uh, a total control in an organization, first of all, when you, when you put people in an organization in certain positions, everybody has a job and they have a certain authority that goes with that job, and with that also a certain responsibility. I think the way Mr. Benson set up the organization, I think it would be very easy to work. I mean, if you're asking me, uh, will I have a hard time working with Bill if we're going to argue about a draft choice, I imagine we'll argue once in a while. I mean, and that'll be life. But I'll guarantee you, the final decision that will be made will be the decision that's made in the best interest of what this football team needs most, what's best for this football team and this organization. It won't be, hey, this is not an ego deal, and it's not a popularity contest either. And I, I'm not on that kick anymore, believe me. If I ever was on that kick, I'm certainly not on it anymore. <laughs> I, I have not looked at any film yet, gang. I, I've, been, I've been hiding from you. <laughs> help on your, uh, your love for gambling. Can you address those two? <laughs> gambling? Uh, you want me to address gambling first? Uh, I would say that uh, in, in the spirit of, uh, of, of I don't, I've never wagered on any sporting event in my life, ever. Uh, I would, I, I've been inclined to go to a casino and roll the dice. Now, if that's what's bad, and, and I guess that would make Lombardi bad for being one of the great horse wagers in the country at that time. So, I mean, to me, you can write anything you want to write. When I go out on a golf course, I don't play a $5 NASA, I'll tell you that right now. When I play with Michael Jordan, it's a little more than five bucks. <laughs> okay, what else? What was the other question? Because that was a good one, too. Well, I mean, just to follow up on the game. Well, my health? My health feels good. But what about the gambling? Uh, well, the league two years ago said that if you didn't return to coach, they would probably be inclined to, to check out um, your connections with the casino in Bay St. Louis. Have you talked to the league at all in terms of no, coming I think, back? I think, I think you're wrong there. I think that was, a, that was an article that was written in the New York Post by a writer. Well, and, it, and you, you also picked it up, but I did work for the casino over there. I did a radio show out of the Casino Magic for two years, I believe, and I met a lot of wonderful people. As a matter of fact, one of the people, a couple of the people who are here today, they were great people. Had nothing to do. We did a radio show with one of the best stations in this town. And I, I thought we did a pretty good job of what we did of trying to be informative to the public. That's all that was about. It was about nothing else. And I realize the rules of the National Football League about association with gambling places. I understand all that now. There will be none of those anymore. You know, you've got to realize at that time I was not working for the National Football League. I was not working for any team within the National Football League. So it's, I, I think it's called, if I'm not mistaken, you know, it's the First Amendment thing. It's freedom of choice. To do what you want to do. Like, what about Jared Vanessi? Jared Vanessi is a fine man. He's a great friend. Uh, the organization here is structured. It's already set up by Mr. Benson. It has nothing to do with Jerry Vanessi or Mike Ditka or anybody else. It's just the way it is. Do you start work tomorrow morning or do you already started? Well, I would say to a point that we've tried to do some things. We haven't done as much as we hope to do, but we've done some things. You seemed very emotional when you uh, first came to the podium. Can you explain where that emotion comes well, from? Well, I'm just an emotional guy. I may be a little bit different than people think I am. You know, I'm, I'm uh, you know when you take a, a job, a responsibility like this, which I'm, I'm really cherishing, I'm looking forward to, I'm severing a lot of ties, a, a lot of things that have happened in my life for 30 years. You know, it, it's tough. When I think about them, it bothers me. But 
The challenge is more important than what the past has meant to me. And that, that's why I get emotional sometimes about that. But it's only in a good way. It's not in a bad way, really. I'm not, I'm not sad. I'm happily emotional, believe me. It's not a true sadness. Mike, was there a sense in, at what point did you, did you start saying, hey, maybe, I, were you missing no. any broadcast? Uh, two years ago, I said it was over, and I meant it was over, and I really didn't. And, and I, I, I would not be in this business today except for these two people. First of all, they expressed the confidence in me, and they felt that I could help. There's a report that Walter Payton is in town. Coach, do you have any thoughts I talked to Walter on the phone. He's not in town. He's in his car, and it's in Chicago. I just got off the phone with him, I swear to God. Are He's not any, in town. Are there any thoughts about having no, him in your no. staff, Coach? He's not. I asked Walter to come to training camp with us next year. I really did, Tom. I want Walter at training camp, and I want, <laughs> I want him to show our running backs how to block. I didn't say how to run. I said how to block because he was the best blocker I've ever seen. Isn't that a conflict Mike, of interest? He works for the Bears, Mike. No, I didn't. Since you left the Bears, have you been close to becoming a head coach in any place? And I want to ask you specifically no. about St. Louis two years ago. Well, I, I, I talked to one person in that organization two years ago, but I was never close to being a head coach anywhere. I, I really wasn't. Can you describe uh, the kind of team you'll have, the topics, the way you play, the defensive that you like? <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's possible to describe exactly. I can tell you what we're going to try to do. I mean, we're going to try to be a very uh, no-nonsense type football team. We're going to try to exert as much pressure as we can defensively on our opponents. And we're going to try to put as much pressure as we can on the opponent's quarterback as we can with our defense. Whether that means we're going to blitz or we're going to do it with four men coming or five men or six men, that will remain to be seen depending on how well our personnel plays. Uh, we, we, we intend to be a multiple front defense and, and a multiple coverage defense. On offense, you know, I wish I could tell you I was a genius, and I'm not a genius, and I never professed to be a genius, but uh, you will see us run the football, and uh, you may not like that. You may think that's boring, but I did that for a long time in Chicago, and it worked, and we're going to learn to run the football before we learn to pass it. Once we learn to run it, then we'll see if we can figure out how to pass it. He is. Is Daniel Brown back? Is he what? Is he a reach because he's only no, special not at all. Why not? Winners are winners. This guy's won on every level he's been at. He's one of the great competitors I ever have known. He's one of the great, uh, he has a great mind for football. And if you, if you ever would question his mind, just take a look at what he did when he took over special teams when he came with me. He made the league change some rules because we beat some people in some plays that were very innovative that he put into our special and he did it this year they won two games on special teams up there this year I would say that he's very innovative and I have and it's not you know anybody can assume what they want it's not a reach for me same drive that you had when you took the Bears job and also what can you do in three years are you planning on getting this team well I have more today than I had yesterday I'm going to have more tomorrow than I had today hell by the time the season comes I'm going to be unbelievable <laughs> I just hope I don't pass out from being so excited. No dome team has ever been to the Super Bowl, let alone won it. Uh, part of the process being to win yep, outdoors yep, in yep. November, December. Could you talk about the toughness you hope to instill and make that possible? I played in this dome against the Saints when you feared for your life, when they would smack you around and they would beat you up physically as well as anybody in football. I played in this dome where you couldn't hear yourself think. You couldn't audible. Huh, thank God. Or we would have tried. <laughs> but that's what we hope to restore. We hope to get the fans and their support back into it, and, and we hope to create that kind of a intensive play with our defense and, and, and those things. Now, I, I understand we're playing 10 games in domes this year, I believe, right, Bill? 10, I think, with St. Louis, Atlanta, and our eight home games. So uh, I don't look at it as a disadvantage at all. The year the Bears won the Super Bowl, we played on AstroTurf, although it was outside. So I think you take your team to what we do. We play in 10 games in domes. That means that, hey, we've got to have a team that plays very fast. We've got to, we've got to look at the athleticism of our team offensively and defensively, and we have to maximize the speed potential if we can do that. I really believe that's the most important thing. Mike, even though you haven't looked at any films, have given some consideration yes. and thought about team members? Yes, I have thought about every player on this football team because I've had the, because I talked to the former head coach and I talked to the the, uh, the uh, interim coach, Rick Venturi, and I think I've got a pretty good handle on their, their feel for who, who was here and, and what the contributions they have made and can make are. Any of the other assistants on the present staff you retained or looked at for 
I will talk to all of them, but it, it's going to be hard. And, it, and it's kind of unfair, and I want to say this honestly, it's kind of unfair to them. But then again, I think when, when, a, when a coach comes in, I, I don't want to burden them with the fact of who I am and, and the way I operate. And, and I really think that I, I have the obligation to, to some people that were very close to me, and I, I feel very <coughs> strongly about as good coaches to bring them in. I mean, it, it, it's unfair. I don't like the way the system works, but I can't control that. I, I, if it was up to me, I'd give every one of these guys a job. I just don't have that ability to do that right now. Michael, a lot of your success back in Chicago demanded absolute discipline and demanded, you know, loyalty yeah. from your players. Any of the free agency and stuff like that, loyalty will be the same in the past. Well, it, it, it might be, but we're going to find out. You, you'll never know until you check it out. And I'm going to check it out very carefully because those who want to be here will be here, and those who don't, there are 29 other teams. They can go play for them. Mike, still got a lot of fans in Chicago. I do. Can you keep any ties to that city, or is that a, is that a close chapter? Well, you know, the one constant in life is change. You know, and you don't always like the change that occurs in your life. Sometimes you like it. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It matters how you handle it. This, this is a great opportunity. I, I'm, I'm, you know, you somebody just said, are you, are you still have the drive? Uh, I have the drive, believe me. And the enthusiasm is growing as I talk to you people now, because I didn't realize how much I missed this. Uh, as far as the draft is concerned, was Mark you considering going after Peyton Manning or anyone else? Well, I think Bill and, and uh, Mr. Benson and the Chet and everybody else will have more, a lot of input into that. We'll decide that. that that's a long way down the line. Right, right. Would, you walk, would you walk us through your timetable when you first discussed the job? Well, I talked to him once. It was about a week ago, Bill. I think about a week ago. Monday. What is did, today? Did Tuesday. Did you meet in San Antonio with you, Joe? Is that what that was? And that was Mike. I, I just, yeah, uh, a week ago, Monday. Okay. Yeah. Mike, when Jim Moore left, he said this team was very, very close to being very, very good. Did he tell you that today when you talked to him? Uh, I, I think the conversation we had alluded to the strengths and the weaknesses, buddy. I, I, I think that really, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked at enough film or any film right now to be, yeah, but I can only go by talking to the people I've talked to. There, there is. Uh, this cupboard, and I want to make this statement very clear, the cupboard is not bare. I'm not coming in here with nothing. I'm coming in here with a great opportunity that was left by the, the people who assembled these players over the last four or five years and by the coaching staff that coached them. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I, the cupboard is not bare. We'll, we'll do the best we can, and we'll try to add to the, what we have, add to the nucleus of this football team. And, 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 and the main thing, I, I think, is, is somewhere along the way, we, we've got to create an attitude that, hey, and I say, why not us? That's that's one thing I'm talking about. Did you say your first contract was a week ago? A week ago, Monday, I believe. Mike Ditka named as the 12th head coach in the New Orleans Saints history. You've just been watching our live coverage. Now, he had a few announcements to make. Let's go over the moves the Saints made today. Besides naming Mike Ditka, of course, number one, he is the new head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Bill Kuharik is given the title of president and general manager. Tom Benson announced that and said that Bill Kuharik will have complete and total authority on that Mike Ditka reports directly to Bill Kuharik. Mike Ditka also made some announcements as far as his staff is concerned. Danny Abramowitz, as we've been reporting for the last couple of days, has been named as the Saints offensive coordinator. Of course, he's a former All-Pro Saints wide receiver. He's been for the last four years, the uh, five years, excuse me, the special teams coach of the Chicago Bears. Zavin Yarline comes in. He's been with the New York Giants for the last four years, coaching their secondary. He also coached with Mike Ditka for the Chicago Bears. He will be the defensive coordinator. Rick Venturi will be retained. He will become the assistant head coach, reporting directly to Mike Ditka, and he will also take on the responsibilities that he had last year before he became the interim head coach of being the linebackers coach. Uh, Mike Ditka also announced that Bobby April will be retained as the Saints special teams coach. Mike Ditka's coaching career, very impressive. 11 years as the Bears head coach. You can see the overall record, 112 wins, 68 losses. He won the Super Bowl with the Bears in 1986. Six NFC Central titles in 11 years. He was the NFL's coach of the year in 1985 and again in 1988. As impressive as his coaching career, his playing career just as impressive. He was the NFL's Rookie of the Year in 1961. His career catches is still among the all-time best for the Chicago Bears. He played in the league for 12 seasons, named to five Pro Bowls. He is also a Hall of Fame player. In fact, he was the first tight end ever inducted into the NFL's Hall of Fame. So you've got a guy who's one of only two men to ever be a, to win a Super Bowl as a player 
as an assistant coach, as a head coach. Mike Ditka has been a proven winner everywhere he's gone. He's been out of coaching for four years, but he said today his enthusiasm is better than ever. He didn't even realize how much he missed it until he got into the fray a little bit today. And uh, as you'll see on Fox 8 a little later on, he had a lot of emotion when Mike Ditka took over this team and announced he was going to be the head coach of this team. And he, uh, he said his Saints goal is to be the best team that they can be, to maximize this team's potential, and to create a sense of pride in the Saints and in this community. We'll, of course, have a lot more on Mike Ditka becoming the new head coach of the New Orleans Saints on Fox 8 at 5, 6, 9, and 10. Right now, we return you to your regularly scheduled programming here on Fox 8. You know, Mike Ditka said this was a big challenge. I think sometime next September, he's going to realize what a challenge this truly is. <laughs> it's Groundhog's Day. Mike Ditka woke up this morning, and just like Pucks and Tani Phil did not see his shadow, that means winning seasons are on the way. Mike Ditka, remember, character counts. We saw a whole lot of quitting going on last year, so when evaluating that talent, remember, character just as much as bench press when you're trying to get those players. Mike did it in Chicago. All I want him to do is do it in New Orleans. Amen on that, and it's good to be with at least three character guys <laughs> here tonight. In 30 minutes here on ABC 26, it's the Pro Bowl Live from Honolulu. But first, the past eight days, can Ditka do it, or what do you think about Ditka is a question asked a million times and then some. Mike Ditka's selection as the new Saints coach has this city buzzing. It's not the first time the Saints have reached out for a Super Bowl winning coach to right the ship. If Ditka does win, he paves the way for his possible successor, Danny Abramowitz. In a minute, we'll talk live with the former Ditka sidekick, Colts quarterback Jim Harbaugh. But first, Mike Ditka's on board less than a week, and he's hitting the ground running. Few who played or coached pro football are into the game's history as much as Mike Ditka. A Hall of Fame tight end with the Bears, Ditka was the Cowboys' special teams coach when George Hallis called this bear home in 1982. Mike is going to be a great coach. The way he handled the players in his mini camp was astonishing. Ironically, Ditka was hired over the objections of then Bears general manager Jim Finks. Three and a half years later, the Bears won the Super Bowl. The same month, Finks was hired to bring life to the Saints. I'd like to introduce the new head football coach of the New Orleans Saints, Mike Ditka. Ditka handled his first news conference and his first week on the job skillfully. But through the media, he has let the current Saints know what he expects of them. Why would I put a guy on the field that wouldn't pass the conditioning test? And, and, and what my thinking on that is that he must not respect his teammates enough to get to be the best player he can be. Ditka doesn't get credit for being a talent evaluator, but many of his first round picks were big winners. It was essential when we got there that we get a quarterback and we got McMahon. It was essential that we get a left tackle, and I got the best left tackle in football in Jim Covert. We needed speed, and we got Willie Galt. We needed an impact player, and we got Wilbur Marshall. We needed a run stopper, and we got William Perry. He realizes this isn't an overnight job, but free agency can get the job done quickly if Mike can convince them to come play for him. Uh, if they don't want to come here, I don't want them. It's not me. I mean, uh, they know who I am. If they think I'm too tough, maybe I am. In the meantime, Saints football will make almost daily headlines. This week, the TV guys in Chicago told us over and over what great TV Ditka is. Get your mouth shut, you jerk. You a man! You a man, Ditka! Ditka. I refuse to stand back and give credit to the other people because we stink. We are absolutely a, an atrocious football team at this point right now. While he will breathe fire into the franchise, his relationship with President and General Manager Bill Kuharek bears watching. As a Philadelphia Eagle, Ditka was once suspended by head coach Joe Kuharek. And let's face it, Jeff, when Mike Ditka had great talent to motivate, he was the master motivator. He got a lot out of his football teams, but I think looking at the draft and free agency, this is not a one-year or maybe a two-year proposition. It might be three or four. Yeah, well, he's only got a three-year deal, so my, who knows? <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he is the master of ticket sales, too. According to the Saints, over 500 applications, including some from Chicago for season tickets for the Saints, so some excitement uh, back with the Saints, Harry. Yeah, you know, I was kind of worried about Mike Ditka coming in, being a little bit of an older coach, maybe a guy that's just kind of ah, satisfied to win a Super Bowl and maybe just coming in here to get a paycheck. From talking to him and watching him, he's already evaluating talent, so I've been pretty impressed. He seems to have already picked up on the weak areas of the Saints and looks like he's going to get to work in a hurry. Hubert? I kind of felt like um, 
Harry did in the beginning, the way he did to the left. But um, after listening to him, I think he um, has laid back a lot more, and he's ready to um, take this challenge that's ahead of him. All right, mm -hmm. and we saw a uh, shot flash up momentarily, and we're glad to have Jim Harbaugh with us uh, from Orlando, Florida in first round of 1987. The Bears drafted uh, Jim in the first round out of the University of Michigan. Yeah, Jim is uh, kind enough to join us live from his off-season home in Orlando, Florida. Jim, uh, is Ditka the right guy for this job? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, uh, Mike Ditka is... Uh, his record speaks for, for itself, and uh, any, any head coach who's ever coached in the NFL would be proud to have his record and uh, his accomplishments. I think he's uh, a proven winner, and uh, both as a player and a coach. Jim, we all know what happened back in 1982 in that game at Minnesota. Uh, you threw the interception, and, and uh, Ditka got very angry. Yet, you love the guy, and I saw you on NBC uh, a couple of weeks ago exchanging pleasantries with him on the air. Uh, talk about your relationship with Ditka. Was it a complex one? Uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't complex, and, and for any player that played for Mike Ditka, all that he ever asks is that uh, you gave it 100% and, uh, and, and played for the Chicago Bears, uh, who he coached. He loved the Bears, and uh, you know, he loved to win, and uh, it wasn't ever, ever complex. He, you knew what you ex he expected from you, and uh, as long as you gave that, then uh, you were friends. Jim, several Saints players uh, last year during the season said that sometimes they were scared to play for Coach Jim Moore, if that's the case, <laughs> what about playing for Mike Ditka? Well, I've always felt that Mike Ditka is a player's coach, and uh, you know, maybe I don't know how it, uh, anybody that's ever played for him, I think, would agree with that. Uh, as long as you gave it everything you had, uh, played hard, and uh, left it out there in the field, you knew what was expected of you. There was never uh, uh, any bones made about that. It was, it was never. Uh, any situation where uh, you didn't know going in what was expected of you. And uh, I loved playing for a coach like that who, he was so competitive and, and wanted to win and you know, you felt like that. And I, I'll tell you the thing that, that Mike Ditka brings to the New Orleans Saints uh, that he brought to the Chicago Bears, he gives a team an identity. And uh, with Mike Ditka, with a Mike Ditka coach team, uh, the Saints will have an identity very soon. Jim, he, he even says uh, to us, I know what they're saying, I'm a dinosaur, I can't do it again. Uh, is it realistic to expect this, this guy to come in here and work miracles? Well, I, I listened to one other person on your show who asked if uh, Mike Dicker would be satisfied winning a Super Bowl and, and picking up a paycheck, and uh, that's, uh, that's just hilarious to me because uh, uh, that's not Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka is, is about winning and winning championships and winning Super Bowls and uh, he'll, he'll never be satisfied to, to pick up a paycheck and uh, he won't, ex he won't uh, tolerate players who uh, have that attitude either. Jim, thank you very much. It was very kind of you to join us from Orlando. Enjoy the off season and good luck to you and the Colts in the future. Thank you. Jim Harbaugh live from Orlando. Jeff? All righty. Mike Ditka's record against the Saints. How about less than 500? Ditka's two biggest wins against the Saints, the 1990 playoffs at Soldier Field, 16 to 6 your final. And in 91, the Bears beat the Saints at the Dome, 20 to 17. The Saints had started the season 7 and 0. And uh, now, Mike, uh, just for you, a little advice from some Saints fans. I wish him the best because he got a lot, a lot of work to do. I do the best you can and keep your head up. Uh, yeah, try to do something about the cheese. What do you think we should do down here to get rid of the cheese? Jambalaya or what? what? Any suggestions? I don't know, just lots of pepper. We have a heart attack. Oh, no. Don't get upset. Work with our team. We're going to make it. The last time Mike did to coast a game at Chicago Soldier Field was December 13, 1992. Well, get ready for a reunion. Ditka will return to Soldier Field next season as his Saints battle the Bears. No doubt about it, it will be fun to say the least. Just ask the current Bears coach. Uh, it'll be interesting. You know, it's going to be great for the fans. You know what I mean? There'll be a lot of excitement uh, with our players, I'm sure, with their players. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's great. I mean, that's, uh, that, that all is part of it. Well, by the way, the actual NFL schedule doesn't come out really until mid to late April, once we know when that Chicago game is. Of course, we'll, we'll let you know right here on ABC 26 News. And my guess is, if the NFL is smart, even though the Saints right now don't deserve a Monday night appearance, <laughs> Ditka at home in Chicago on a Monday night, I think that's smart television. Yeah, that'd be something else. Well, I tell you what, so what's 
We're talking about the offensive coordinator, Danny Abramowitz. He's been a player with the Saints and 49ers, a broadcaster, an oil salesman, a high school coach with Jesuit, a special teams coach for four years with the Bears, and now the man when it comes to the O in New Orleans. Danny inherits an offense that needs, if not a complete overhaul, close to it. He nursed Chicago's special teams back to health. Now Dr. Danny must do the same to the Saints and then some. I'm a person, if you look uh, in my life, that uh, I enjoy uh, challenge. I thrive on challenge. Well, Danny, welcome to the challenges to top all challenges. The Saints offense was as sick as a dog last season. <laughs> Coughing up fumbles, interceptions, mistake after mistake. It was enough to make you lose your lunch. The Saints ranked dead last in rushing, and I do mean dead, and five from the bottom in passing to finish 29th overall. But Danny will be the first one to tell you that they weren't that bad. All I know is the Bears came down here uh, last year with a pretty decent football team, and the Saints, especially in the second half, destroyed us. So the question is, how will the Saints' offense destroy opponents on a more consistent basis? The philosophy in general is you've got to run the football. If you don't run the football, you're going to be in trouble in this league. Fans want to see win, win, win. It don't matter run, 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 pass, pass, pass. They want win, win, win. Football's kind of like going to war. Danny knows he needs more weapons to win those wars, but he still likes a few he's got in his arsenal. Let me say like, like four names, Jim Everett. He's done it for many years. If I say Mario Bates. Uh, at times really ran the ball well, will seem to be a tough guy. If I say Willie Rowe. Hey, man, what else can you say? Where's he at uh, this week? What if I say Michael Haynes? Tremendous speed, able to get deep for many years. Whatever the case, some will stay, maybe more will go. The fact is, whoever stays will have to get an earful and eyeful of Danny Abramowitz day in and day out. Let me see in a man's heart. Let me see a man's eyes. That's why I like to look at people when players. I want to see them in the eyes. Let's look at the eyes because the eyes will get down into the heart. If a man wants to do it, see, I want to do it. I want to be successful. I want this team to be successful. Mm -mm. If you don't believe Danny knows how to be successful, check out the stats. He played for the Saints and Niners from 67 to 74 and was a pro bowler in 69. Danny hauled in plenty of passes. He's second on the all-time Saints receiving list with over 5,700 yards and 39 touchdowns. Mm. And Jeff, looking at he, what he has to work with, the Jets will probably take Peyton Manning if he does indeed come out with the first pick. Then you've got Orlando Pace. So your backfield is probably going to be Mario Bates, Ray <laughs> Zellers, and Lorenzo Neal, an unrestricted free agent if he returns. So can Ditka do it? Can Abramowitz, Abramowitz motivate Mario Bates, that might be one of the things that uh, we have to look for as the Saints try to run the ball. Yeah, you know, and even Danny came out and said, well, we have some weapons, but uh, not very many. They're going to have to go out in the free agent market and do some trades, definitely. I tell you what, guys, you can see it in Danny Abramowitz's eyes. He was an instinctive player. If he's instinctive as an offensive coordinator, he'll do a great job. Another instinctive player, Buford Jordan. What do you think of Danny O? Danny A. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think um, Danny's had success wherever he's been, and um, he's got a challenge ahead of himself. I think he, he spoke a little bit early. He didn't watch this team all year <laughs> long to see what he has ahead, <laughs> like we did. But uh, I think if anybody can do it, I'd give it to Danny. <laughs> and they were going to run the ball so much, maybe even Buford Jordan. Might Make a return, huh? Make a return and get a few <laughs> carries along the way. Before we start calling Mike Ditka St. Mike, let's not forget that he is the f not the first Super Bowl winning coach that's taken over this franchise. Does the name Hank Stram ring a bell? Harry McCullough joins us to talk about the man who led the Saints back in 1976 and 77. Harry. That's right. Hank Stram guided the Kansas City Chiefs to two Super Bowls. He won number four here in New Orleans, 23-7 over the Vikings, but after trading in that red and gold for the black and gold, Hank lasted only two seasons. All this sounds too familiar. The year was 1975, and the Saints were the worst scoring offense in the league. As a result, they lost 10 more games than they won. Then owner John Meekham Jr. decided to turn to the available superstar in the coaching ranks, Hank Stram, a man that would lead the way to the Super Bowl. For Hank Stram has returned to New Orleans a Saint. But the only thing I can promise is that we're going to spend uh, every available moment building and uh, thinking and scheming and whatever we have to do to, to make this the kind of a franchise I think it deserves to be. And we will do the best we can to 
put the best product on the field that we can, that the people in this community and the people around the National Football League will be proud of. Hank Stram came to Louisiana in 1975 and never left. He's comfortable at his 23-acre home in Covington, but he's not comfortable with the fact that he never finished a job in New Orleans. We had a five-year contract, you know, and then uh, we had uh, wound up with a two-year contract, so we had to coach fast. <laughs> the toughest thing about it is if you get involved with a losing franchise and don't have enough time to bring it back, the, 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 the toughest thing about it is being able to endure the losing after you've won, especially, especially if you won a Super Bowl game. Stram's record in New Orleans was 7-21, but had a healthy Archie Manning for only eight of his 28 games. He laid the building blocks for success with two pretty good drafts, but he was pulled before his talent developed. And he says Tom Benson can't make that same mistake that John Meekham Jr. did. If you get involved with an owner that doesn't know that he doesn't know, then you got a problem. So now that nine years of losing has turned to 30 years without a playoff victory, the question to Hank Stram, can Ditka do it? Certain people, certain coaches belong in certain places, you know, and I think Mike Ditka was perfect for Chicago, and if he couldn't be in Chicago, the next perfect place for him would be right here. All right, so after his short stint with the Saints, of course, Hank went into broadcasting. Ooh, watch that. He is still the winningest coach in Chiefs history with 124 wins, 76 losses, and 10 ties. Ed, Jeff? All right, H, thank you. You know, one of the things that uh, Hank Stram had working against him, he didn't get along with John Meekham from the beginning. And back then, the Saints were horrible defensively as well. And I think Buford Jordan, that at least the Saints have a foundation. If they can run the ball and not turn it over, then maybe next year their defense can carry the mail for them a little bit. Don't you think? Definitely so. You know, um, thing is, is that Mike's coming in with a good attitude about it, but I think the biggest key going to be is the emotion that he said he's going to show. If he can show some emotion, I think that's what this, this team is going to need, uh, an emotional coach. That they have. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> emotional, to say the least. Well, winning a Super Bowl and then going to another team does not guarantee success. Hank Stram will tell you that. He won a Super Bowl with Kansas City, only to go 7-21 and with New Orleans. After winning with the Giants, Bill Parcells, of course, had success with the Patriots. Going to the Super Bowl this year, 32-32 and overall, though. He is not, he's alone, though. Tom Flores won a pair of Super Bowls with the Raiders, which stunk it up in Seattle. And, of course, we can't judge Jimmy Johnson by one season. He was only 8-8 eight and eight with Miami last year. Okay. <laughs> What do you want to do? Get the hell out of here, you oh, sick nice. You want to get answers to what you need? Get them from Red Mott Law. The expert of everything. Oh, hey, come on, you're hey. You're hey. You're hey. Well, anyone that scares off, they're not the kind of guys we have on this football team. So I think it's going to bring out the best and the guys that are going to be the leaders on this football team. And who will the leaders be? The Saints of 1997 could have a roster turnover similar to the Miami Dolphins of 1996. Jimmy Johnson's team had 23 new players on the roster. 21 of their 53 players were 25 years or younger and 10 of them rookies. Talk about cleaning house. Saints players will definitely have to buckle down with Mike Ditka. We caught up with a few, well, we caught up with Mike Ditka to ask him what he thought about a few of those Saints. I think it's the worst thing in the world. I hear people say, well, you need, you know, need to get a quarterback. You need to make a change. Well, well, it's pretty hard to be an effective quarterback in the National Football League when you really don't have a running game. He's got to get in better shape. He's not in good enough shape. He's got to get in shape where he can go. If I say, to, if I say Mario Bates, I'm going to hang my hat on you. You're going to catch the ball, touch the ball 40 times a day. Can your body stand there? Yeah, I mean, that's a question only he can answer, but I don't know. The system that we're running uh, would fit very much his talents because he'll get a chance to run with the ball also. And he's a good runner, too. I mean, he's not only just a blocker and a receiver, he's a good runner. But, you know, if, if he's not there, we'll find somebody else to put in that position. But that guy's got to be a guy like Johnson was with Dallas. Well, you know, teams are throwing it all over the NFL, but I got a feeling the Saints are going to be like Mike a little bit. They're going to be a little bit of a throwback, a mm -hmm. tough football team. Yeah, just a tad. And I tell you what, uh, the way free agency is now in the NFL, it's almost like you have to be a recruiter, kind of like in college. And the, the big question is, will players come to play for Mike Ditka? I say yes. 
Yeah, you, you also say yes because a lot of times the bottom line is that money. When, uh, when the, the top dollar's up there, they'll come in. A lot of people want to play for the Saints now. It'll be a good chance to get in here. This, uh, this city is just ripe for the picking if any team can come in, similar to what we saw in Green Bay. So if anybody can come in and just have a little bit of success, we're ready to jump on. What do you think, Bew? Definitely so. And um, I think there's a lot more people out there that you think that want to play for Mike Ditka because as, you can, as we saw in some of the clips, hey, he's a very emotional guy, and hey, he's going to bring a lot to this team. Well, I tell you what, Buford, if all of us jump on the bandwagon, it's going to be a heavy bandwagon. <laughs> They're going to have to get a bus to pull that thing. I hear you. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, the countdown is on. Only five and a half months until training camp under Mike Ditka. Across Wisconsin will probably never be the same. Then sometime in early September, the season opener. If anything, it should be interesting. I'm Ed Daniels. And I'm Jeff Peterson. Coming up next, Willie Rowe from the NFC take on the AFC in the Pro Bowl. Then stay tuned for ABC 26 News after the game. Let the wild and wacky Iron Mike who did era begin. Sure, I have a temper and I'm proud of it because I think uh, if it's controlled properly, I think it motivates me to do better things. Get your mouth shut. It won't be anything that anybody will ever see here. You jerk. The little man, Dickus. Dickus. You can be a Kabowski too. If you want to try, here's all you do. Get off your bottom and reach for the top. Keep on shuffling and never stop. We're Kabowski. Jerk. They don't call me Iron Mike for nothing. Get your mouth shut. We are the bears, shuffling through, shuffling on down.